Hello, Slayers of Subluxation. It's Dr. Anthony from Cairo Edge. And this episode is with Dr. Otto Jenke, who's an awesome, awesome, awesome chiropractor. And we're going to be talking about HRV. And there are tons of good nuggets in this, not only research-wise, but also for educating your practice members. I say that to let you know because the audio is completely wonky. There's lots of dropouts, and honestly, it's a bit hard to get through. I debated posting it, but there was just so much value from the actual conversation that I decided to put it up just simply because I know that if you can get through it, you're going to take some nuggets away from it. That being said, if this the poor audio is a reason that you want to skip this by all means go ahead but if you can get through it i highly recommend at least giving you that it a shot and with that let's cue the music and get started attention chiropractors slayers of subluxation unleashers of the imprisoned impulse i am dr anthony pellegrino from cairo edge and welcome to this week's episode of the chiropractic research breakdown where each week We break down the most relevant chiropractic science and philosophy to empower you with the ammo and certainty necessary to change your community from the inside out. I'm super excited. I'm your host, Dr. Anthony Pellegrino, and I'm here with Dr. Otto Jenke. Am I saying that right there, Doc? It's like, uh, yeah, I said it correctly, man. New York Yankees, but with a J. New York Yankees with a J. I like that. We've got a lot of uh, of Yankees fans down here in the People's Republic of New Jersey as well. So we're going to be diving deep uh, into some research on HRV, on adaptability of the nervous system, specifically on a case report um, for a post-breast cancer female. We do make this information, as you guys know, into patient newsletters. So if you guys want to jump on board for that, get this in your practice inbox, check out chiroagemedia.com. But to dive in, the name of the article is Improvement in Vagal Function in a post Breast Cancer Patient Receiving Chiropractic Care, a Case Study. So, Doc, before we dive into the the article itself, one of the things that I really appreciate with you and reading the articles you've written in the past, as well as our conversations that we've had back and forth, is just your understanding and application of adaptability of nervous system of HRV. So, before we go into the actual case, can you just give us a little bit of a background on like what heart rate variability is and why it's applicable to us in a chiropractic clinic? First of all, Anthony, thanks for having me be on with you. This is that HRV, very, very simply, measures me small differences in heartbeats. Why is that important? Because of this. If a bear walks into the room, your heart rate should jump. That's normal. The bear, but when the bear leaves the room, your heart rate should go down. That's the exact talk we have with our patients all the time. Is there a bear in the room? And, and imagine someone had a bear in the room. What would the heart rate be like? Would be up. Cholesterol levels, up. Digest, abnormal. Reproduction, abnormal. Focus, daddy to go into deep cognitive thinking, down. Breathing, altered. All those things happen. By the way, those things are normal. But you take a look around, you go like, holy cow, man. And I tell them, look around. Is there a bear in the room? There's no bear. But your body thinks that there is. This is absolutely critical because I don't know about you, but that is my practice. These are the people I see in my practice all the time. And it's going to be from starting from teenagers on up. We're seeing heart rate variability. This perception, this perception of a perception that they're in danger perception that there's a event going on they perceive this and their altered physiology shows this why is this important believe this is me you should be testing this stuff all the time in your practice all the time if you're going to talk nerve man you got to show nerve man and here's the best way to show nerve and by the way we're going to show this all the time is that we know that chiropractic adjustments, when you detect and correct the subluxation, when you are adjusting somewhat, I will show you. How many articles do you want me to show you? It's, it is a great time to be a chiropractor, is it not? Absolutely. Yeah. By the way, if you are looking for the research, looking for the research specifically in chiropractic, I would tell you that the 15, 20 to me, none of them are from chiropractic journals. But if you can improve the nervous system, 
that you have an opportunity to only help someone uh, get through cancer, which my case study showed, showed them that they're able to live something brand new that's ne we never never even thought about this before. That now they they did what they had to do to stay alive, but now we're helping them to live. How do you do that? You get the vagus nerve rocking, man. You can't do it by medications. Pharmacology wants to do that, and it fails dramatically. How can we have something that doesn't have side effects, positive effects? It's the adjustment. This is just what the science shows. This is what it shows. We can do this very well. I love that. I love that. And, and I mean, you're, you're, you're completely right. Looking at reading the article, one of the things that I, 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 I didn't realize what makes sense, I didn't realize there was research to show individuals or, or women specifically who had been through chemotherapy have a significantly reduced heart rate variability, which makes sense because to stay alive during chemo, like there literally is a bear in the room. It's just a bear inside and it's chemicals, right? I mean, it's chemotherapy. So it makes sense that that's going to be reduced for a long period of time. Specifically in this case, she met her eight months after she was done with chemo. She's, she's post-cancer. She's in remission, low HRV, and her, her quality of life was completely impacted. When we look at this actual mechanism for like why chiropractic improves HRV or why that should be a conversation that you have with her, how the spine actually plays a role with that part of the nervous system, how does that explanation kind of come in for you to that patient or practice member? Her first day in my office, we you know, our full evaluation up with her with HRV is that she is toast. Her nervous system is toast. Here's here's the in here's the critical thing. It's supposed to be toast after chemotherapy, and the nervous system and the research shows these women that they're going to have low HRV. They're going to have low adaptability, quality of life. And by the way, that is expected. How do I know? Research shows that. Now, they expected, I, I thought it was a word until you start reading the latest research. Research shows that it's going to be maybe 10 years after they've gone through the chemotherapy to keep them alive. But they're going to have the brain fog. They're going to have the digestive difficulties. Maybe not feeling their extremities. Maybe not feeling, uh, always feeling fatigue. All these things. Well, you know, we try to, in many places, we try to look outside. And how many things can we add to the person? Can we talk about uh, digestive uh, issues and talk about nutrition with these people? You can, but it is so unique. It is incredible. And these people, they've been toasted, man. They've been toasted. And their their biome is a mess. And so it's not like and I'm a I'm a plant based eater. And so it's not like I can say, by the way, I think you should eat keto, eat foods, uh, eat plant based, whatever it is, because it's so unique for each person. So why don't we get back to the one system that controls it all? And you can say to them, listen, I think you should do. By the way, we have meditation in my office. I do meditation, but it works differently. Why don't we get to the one system that controls it all? I think you should exercise. And they're saying, I can't exercise. I'm always fatigued. So why don't we get back to the one system that controls it all? And we talk to them about that same thing. You think there's a bear in the room. I show them their scans right in front of them. I show them the scans. I make it as simple as, and we talk about this. We've known this is the one, the key core that, that inside you is the greatest chemist ever. Inside you is the greatest that unlock that. And it takes time. That's awesome. That's good. And I think what you just said is 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 really impactful. And I hope for anybody listening, I mean, a lot of times this podcast is about the science and the research, and we're going to keep talking about that. But there's so many good nuggets that just go for how we can relate to and, and understand, communicate with our practice members. And, and what you think I, I said is just so impactful that out there, like you beat it, right? Like we beat cancer, the the big C congratulations but it's like this post-apocalyptic well yeah we won the war but what's left like there's nothing left is this what life is supposed to be and to be able to start to rebuild that foundation i mean that is that that is could you think of a better definition of what chiropractic is on this planet for right i mean to rebuild that foundation okay congratulations yeah. you survived well let's get some life i see these women and you see these women, and they're ringing the bell. You did it. 
again, they, they had to do to stay alive. How do you get back into living again? And, you know, I got into chiropractic because I read a, two sentences in a book in a Las Vegas library. One was that we're the most over-medicated, most over and we're not the healthiest. But the second line was that everything we've ever needed to be our healthiest is locked within us. We need to unlock that and let it go, let it rock. If we start to teach the nervous system, allow it to unlock, unleash, we have an opportunity to help these people. Now, Anthony, let's take it one step farther. Why do we have to wait for people who have cancer to be in our office calling me? And I have more people call me and saying, what are you doing here? How are you doing this? That's awesome. And I, and I, I like, and, and I think like looking at it, this, what, what the, the fact that everything we have within us, it's not even, I mean, it's a chiropractic principle, but it's not like we're the only ones that think that. And this is something I like to talk about with people. And like, yes, there's uh, people in other professions. Like there's, there's good and bad in every profession, right? Um, uh, my wife's an RN. And we always have this conversation that's like, you know, the medical community comes so much under fire in chiropractic. And it's like on day one of anatomy and physiology, one of the things that they learn is that the, we're greater than the sum of our parts. You know, that's not just a chiropractic thing. And it's like, if we can understand this, you, what we're referencing now is their research, not our research. They believe what we believe. They know what we believe. You know, the medical profession has gone from doing very invasive vagal nerve stimulators to now like transcutaneous because they want to be less invasive because they want to activate that vagus nerve and they believe what we believe. And if we understand how the body actually works, we can say, Hey, listen, we're on the same page. You just may not have looked at it in yes. this light, but we we're good. We're going for the same yes. thing here. Yes. For some people they got like, Hey, we understand chiropractic impacts the nervous system. We understand we're measuring these HRV changes how, and just for people who are missing this connection here, missing this bridge, how does adjusting the spine, how does adjusting the spine influence the nervous system such that HRV, like how does the spine actually go and by correcting subluxation, how is that affecting and changing the HRV? So uh, the truth answer is, I don't know the whole story. What I've seen is, is that we affect the prefrontal cortex. I know that up there we can change the way they act with uh, to, to with inflammation and react to stress fully. How does it work? Truthfully, I don't know, but I do know this: when we start to adjust people, and we see the changes, and we can document the changes, and I'm going to take it one step farther for you. A uh, short time ago, I had a young boy in my office, and. Um, as we do with everybody, I asked the mom to write this young boy was on. And I look up the medications, as you all do. And I look at the side effects of the medications. One of the medications said, and it said in WebMD, this is kind of looked up two other places. It said that we do not know how this medication works. We do not know how the medication works. But we know it has these effects on upon, upon someone. I slammed it shut. I slammed the, uh, the paper closed right away, Anthony. And I said, why is it in chiropractic we have to understand the neural connection when pharmacology is, is pushing this stuff left and right and they have no idea how it works all the time? So my truth is, I don't know how it works. I don't know how I would dash in sub nine seconds, but I know they do. We measure them in awards for that. And it's about time we start doing the same thing in chiropractic and helping people. That's funny. Yeah, I, I, I've i read. It's funny. Maybe Dan Murphy. I would say Chris Kent probably knows. And Heidi Havoc's up there, too. I, I really enjoy Chris Kent's um, model, the four dimensional model of subluxation and disaffrontation yeah. um, and how that aberrant bombardment of proprioceptive information Something I it reminds me of his description of how the frontal cortex is being bombarded by the spine. There's a movie, the new uh, Man of Steel, Superman, not the Batman versus Superman. I like to talk about heroes and comics whenever I can. There's this scene in this movie uh, in Superman, Man of Steel, where the new one, not the old one, where General Zod or Zog, Zod or whatever his name is, takes his helmet off. And this helmet has been blocking all of the inputs on Earth that he's not used to. It's been blocking all of these brainwaves, all of these sounds, everything like that, so we can focus on one thing. 
and he gets completely bombarded by all the stimuli that are on earth, the sounds of the birds, because he can't filter it out properly. And he shuts down. He goes on the ground. He can't survive. He can't figure it out. And it's like when subluxation is present, I believe that that is basically what's happening in the brain, that it can't properly filter. It's being bombarded with information because the body's like, hey, I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong place. Proprioception, proprioception, nociception. What are we going to do? What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? And the brain's like, hold up. This is exhausting. I don't want to do this anymore. And I believe in the easiest yes. way of thinking about it, that that scene is actually yes. written by a chiropractor. That's what I believe. Well, I want to thank you so much for uh, taking the time to be with me and breaking down this case and breaking down HRV and not only in the science, um, which we, I had a lot of fun talking about that with you and the adaptability, but I definitely took a lot away for just patient communication and being able to take this and break this down and make it digestible and making sure that there's no bear in the room. I want to thank you so much, Doc, uh, Dr. Otto, for taking the time to share with us today. I know everybody's gonna going to get a lot of value uh, from what we brought today. Thanks again if you guys were listening for, for getting on with another episode of the Chiropractic Research Breakdown. Make sure you jump on chiroregmedia.com because we're going to take all this information we talked about today, break it down into a nice newsletter for you to hand out in your office, which is awesome. So once again, thank you guys. Go slay some subluxations. I love you all. <laughs> <laughs>